For years, I only made waffles for breakfast on weekends and special occasions. The whisking, the mixing, the measuring, plus getting my family out the door to work at school on time. What an ordeal. Today, I'm gonna show you a recipe for overnight yeast waffles. They whisk together in five minutes, go in the refrigerator to rise overnight, and when you wake up in the morning, all you have to do is plug in your waffle iron. Let's get started. As with all pancake and waffle batters, we're just going to incorporate our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients. For our dry ingredients, I'm adding one one quarter ounce packet of dry yeast granules to two and one quarter cups of flour, a generous tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. And I'm quickly going to whisk that together. In a small saucepan, I've melted two and three quarters cups of milk, one stick of butter, and a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Now I did this ahead of time because once this mixture uh, is, is, once the butter melts into the saucepan, you have to let it cool to between 110 and 120 degrees so you don't kill your yeast. And that takes about a half an hour. So I did that ahead of time for the camera. So I've got a nice well here in the center of my dry ingredients. And I'm going to add all of my milk and butter mixture. And I'm going to start slowly to get the flour incorporated. And I'm just going to whisk this. And I'm just going to increase the speed of my hand till this gets almost smooth. A few little lumps won't bother this at all. Oh, I can smell that vanilla. Okay, and now I've whisked two large eggs at room temperature. Add those. And I'm going to whisk this till it's really smooth and drizzly. We want all of these eggs to be thoroughly incorporated into this mixture. And I said this goes together in less than five minutes. I think I should have said less than two minutes. That is smooth and drizzly and perfect. The only thing left for me to do is cover this bowl with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator overnight and as long as 20 hours to anywhere from 10 to 20 hours and this waffle batter is going to be wonderful. Traditionally, yeast risen waffles are Belgian waffles and they're made in a waffle iron with bold, deep grids. Traditionally, waffles made with baking powder and baking soda are American waffles, and they're made in a waffle iron with shallow, delicate grids. What this means is, if you're making waffles from a recipe or even a mix that contains baking powder or baking soda, you're making American waffles made in either an American waffle iron or a Belgian waffle iron. Today, we're making yeast risen waffles, which means we're making Belgian waffles. My dough is out of the refrigerator and you can see it is at least doubled in bulk. I'm just going to take a nice big spoon and I'm going to give it a couple of good stirs. There's really no reason to over mix this. You can see it's a little bit thickier and stickier than an ordinary pancake batter, but it is still, it's still pretty loose. I'm just going to get as much of that off of that spoon as I can. My waffle iron is preheated, and I know that because the indicator light went off. All waffle irons pretty much work the same. The light's going to go on and off during the process, but that shouldn't be an indication of whether or not you should cook on it or not. It's working kind of like the thermostat in your oven. It's just keeping the machine at a constant temperature. So I'm going to open this up. Ooh, look at that. Steam. Now, I already know that the grids on my waffle iron require about a half a cup. But you might have to do a test batch on yours because, well, quite frankly, you might have a different manufacturer of your waffle iron. So I'm going to just get myself a ladle here and I'm going to try to level each one of these off as much as I can using a tablespoon. And I don't really want to go overboard with my batter. 
I want to get it as level as I can. So on each half of my Belgian waffler, I'm going to place one half cup of waffle batter. And I'm going to try, and I hope this makes sense, and I'll show you on the second one, to kind of lean it to the back of the waffle iron, to the back of the grids. It's a little bit of a trick I've learned. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I close this waffle iron, it's going to naturally push the batter forward into the machine. And believe me, if I make eight waffles without any of them dripping over the side, that'll be a miracle. That happens to everybody. And we're going to get about eight waffles today. So let's cook about two minutes per batch. Wow. <laughs> Those have been about two minutes, maybe two minutes and 15 seconds. And they are looking good. I'm just going to lift them out of there with the aid of a fork and a spatula. And you can see even these little drips are perfect. And just in a couple minutes, well, my family's going to eat them. But I can, if I want these to look really pretty, I just trim off the sides. Now I'm just going to close my waffle iron for just about 30 seconds, as long as it took me to remove those two waffles. And I'm going to get my next ladle full ready to go in. And the next thing you're going to notice is as your batches continue to cook, now those took about two minutes, the time is probably going to decrease because these grids are really holding a lot of heat. Okay, ready for our next batch. There we go. Level it off the best you can. Close the lid, and we're good to go for another two minutes. Second batch is done. And you're going to know that we're going to get pretty much exactly eight waffles from my recipe. If you were doing this on an American waffle pan, you'd probably get a few more because the grids are more shallow. One other thing that I probably should mention, if I were making these for people sitting right here at my kitchen counter, I'd be serving them as they come off the waffle iron, hot and steamy. But today, I'm calling all of my guests to the table. And what I'm going to do, or what I've done, is I've placed a rack in a baking pan. And I'm just going to pop these in a 300 to a 325 degree oven for about five minutes. And then I'm going to call everybody to breakfast. With a recipe as easy and delicious as this, waffles are not just for special occasions anymore. Waffles for breakfast with maple syrup and butter, chicken and waffles for dinner, waffles and ice cream with strawberries for dessert. You decide. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website.